Hello, uh, my name is Claudio Rabeck. I am a pulmonary physician and uh, I work in the University Hospital at Dijon in France. I am in charge of the uh, breathing strain disorders and the uh, home ventilator home ventilation unit in this hospital uh, in the pulmonary department. And uh, I am going to talk about some uh, important issues in home mechanical ventilation. I will focus on some important aspects. The first uh, part will uh, focalize about historical aspects and physiological basis and gold and targets to be obtained by home mechanical ventilation. And in the second part, and I will uh, focalize about monitoring uh, long-term mechanical ventilation by basic, basic tools and uh, uh, after then an in-depth evaluation. So let me move to the first part of my presentation. Some, uh, some historical uh, data about in home mechanical ventilation. In fact, home mechanical ventilation is not a new thing because uh, in the, in the 50s, during the polio epidemics, uh, there was the first attempt to, to long-term ventilate uh, patients. In fact, at this time, uh, we use um, negative pressure ventilation by using the iron lung. And uh, as you can see in the, in the slide, uh, this is a photograph of the polio epidemics in Copenhagen uh, during the 50s. And, uh, um, this uh, way to ventilate uh, is, um, is a way that nowadays is not uh, so used. After then, in the 70s, we began to ventilate our patient by positive pressure ventilation by using a tracheostomy. And this was a very interesting way to uh, allow to the patient to, to return home. Later, in the 80s, um, the work published by uh, Sullivan that showed the efficacy of mask ventilation uh, to treat patients with sleep apnea allow us to introduce this, uh, this mode of ventilation that is non-invasive uh, um, ventilation to provide also a, a ventilatory support for patients with uh, chronic res and acute respiratory failure. In fact, there is a big difference between negative pressure ventilation and positive pressure ventilation. So let me explain you some basic physiological concepts about uh, uh, ventilation. In a physiological condition, the work of breathing is performed by a diaphragm by generating negative pressure in the thoracic cage. And this allows to the subject to um, take a breath from the atmospheric pressure and to ventilate the alveoli. In fact, when a patient hypoventilates, this work of breathing is not enough to ensure normal gas, gas exchange. Negative pressure ventilation, in fact, simulates work of breathing performed by diaphragm by generating negative pressure by a device that is put in, outside the thoracic cage of the patient. So this is a true physiological ventilation. But in fact, this type of ventilation is a cumbersome, is uncomfortable, at, and because there is a asynchrony between a negative pressure generated by diaphragm and the upper airway muscles, they, this mode of ventilation could induce obstructive apneas. Nowadays, in fact, we ventilate our patient with positive pressure intermittent ventilation um, by uh, using both um, invasive interfaces uh, such as um, endotracheal tube or tracheostomy, but also we have the possibility to ventilate our patient with uh, non-invasively by using um, mask interfaces. In both cases, we provide to the patient a positive pressure ventilation. So, as you can see in the slide, this mode of ventilation is not so physiological, but is less cumbersome and more easy uh, to be provided uh, in the real life. In fact, after 
uh, these advances in terms of uh, mechanical ventilation, the number of patients uh, receiving long-term mechanical ventilation uh, is continuously increasing. This increase is due firstly to growing evidence uh, of uh, the efficacy of long-term mechanical ventilation in a broad range of indication, but also because the industry developed the ma major technological advances that uh, uh, led to, to, to us to, to have the availability of a different portable ventilator. But also, there, the, this type of ventilation are very user-friendly, and we acquired an important clinical experience in the field of long-term mechanical ventilation in different types of respiratory failure. So let me show you some uh, data um, for different European countries. Uh, the first uh, slides um, show the trend in uh, patients under long-term mechanical ventilation in France. And as you can see, there is a progressive increase in the number of patients ventilated, but especially for two pathologies, the fourth is COPD, that is in red in the, in, the, in the slide, and after then in the obesity hypoventilation patient that is in orange in the slides. So these are data of, uh, of uh, Geneva Lake region in Switzerland, published by Janssen in 2003 in CHEST, that showed also the increase of ventilated patient in, in Switzerland with a very important contribution of obesity hypoventilation patients and COPD. This is also reflected in uh, these slides that show uh, data of uh, home ventilator commercialized in France between 2003 and 2006. As you can see in this slide, the number of ventilators doubled in only three years. Let me move to the second part of this first part of my presentation, that is uh, some physiological concepts about patient-ventilator interaction. In fact, we need to understand that mechanical ventilation is a situation in which two machines are needed to perform the same work. When we spontaneously ventilate, the work of breathing is performed by the muscle pump, respiratory muscle pump. At the opposite side, when a patient is anesthetized, all the work of breathing is ensured by the ventilator. But in our real life, when we ventilate our patient, the two devices, the two machines, need to be synchronized uh, to ensure a correct ventilation. And in this context, the key word is interaction. In this slide, you can see the complex interaction between patient and ventilator. In the vertical axis, you can see the effort performed by the patient, the inspiratory effort. And the horizontal axis, you can see the work performed by the ventilator. As you move <clears throat> in the vertical axis, patients perform more and more of the work of reading. And we, when, when you move in the um, horizontal axis, is ventilated and taking charge uh, most of the work of reading. So in one extreme, you have spontaneous ventilation, and in another extreme, you have controlled ventilation by the ventilator. But in fact, <clears throat> in our clinical practice, I think it's much more complex because um, it's no frequent that a patient perform only him the work or that ventilator ventilate patient passively. So the complex interaction um, make that the situation in, in the clinical practice is at, at the middle of uh, these two axes. What about non-invasive ventilation? Non-invasive ventilation is a way to provide positive intermittent positive pressure ventilation. But non-invasive ventilation is a particular case because compared to invasive ventilation, non-invasive ventilation has two unique characteristics. The first is that NIV is a non-hermetic system. 
And the second is that there is a variable system interposed between patient and ventilator, and that is represented by the upper airway. That means that patient ventilator assembly cannot be considered as a single compartmental model. This discontinuity between the patient, uh, patient and the ventilator may explain that when we use a volume mod, the ventilator could not be able to provide the volume that you set. But also, when we use a pressure mod, the ventilator could not be able to ensure the parameter pressure. All this complexity challenge the uh, quality of ventilation. And uh, if you have to define a well ventilation patient, we could consider that a patient is well ventilated when the ventilator provides a proportional assistance to uh, his needs without limiting the own respiratory activity of the patient. This is very important because if the patient performs a lot of work and the ventilator is not able to provide uh, the need of the patient, there will be an asynchrony between patient and ventilator. And the opposite is also true. A second condition to consider a patient as well ventilated is uh, to improve the clinical things of hypoventilation, but also the biological things of hypoventilation, that is hypercapnia and hypoxemia. But a key condition is that we use, in general, long-term mechanical ventilation during sleep. This is explained by the fact that sleep is a situation that challenges respiratory pump. So in patients with ventilatory failure, sleep is a very, very difficult condition. So we privilegiate the, the, the long-term mechanical ventilation uh, during the night. And uh, it implies that we have to respect or at least to preserve sleep quality in these patients. There are three key items when we consider to evaluate quality of ventilation in patients under long-term mechanical ventilation. The first is to define the goals to be obtained. The second is to define the way to ensure them that is the target. And the third is to choose the appropriate tools to assess home ventilation quality. What about therapeutic goals? There are three main goals in long-term mechanical ventilation. The first is to give to the patient satisfaction. And the first important thing in this context is to improve symptoms, but also to give to the patient comfort, that is to give to the patient a good perception of quality of ventilation. The second item is to respect or to improve sleep quality. And the third, of course, is to provide an effective ventilatory support. And this effectiveness of ventilatory support uh, is characterized by three main aspects. The first is to improve data and PCO2. The second is to improve nocturnal hypoventilation. And the third is to improve or to ensure a good nocturnal oxygen saturation. What about the targets in long-term mechanical ventilation? We have to provide the optimal level of ventilatory support optimal patient ventilatory synchrony, not to produce apneas under non-invasive ventilation, but also to impede a high level of non-intentional leaks. So for this first part, what are the take-home messages? We have two ways to provide ventilatory support, negative and positive pressure. We have two ventilatory modalities, invasive and non-invasive ventilation. We have two power source, that is patient and ventilator. And we have two keywords to ensure an adequate ventilatory support and to ensure also an appropriate patient ventilator synchrony. So thank you for your attention.